One thing that gets me about this is, uh, you know, they keep describing the shepherd. And the shepherd, as we know, was not a high-status job back then, you know. Shepherds were, as we know, kind of... <laughs> but why a shepherd? Why a shepherd? Well, we know that a shepherd is totally devoted to the sheep. We know that a shepherd has to be mentally tough. Because some days it might just be monotonous. Some days it might be just, who knows? I don't know the life of a shepherd. But you've got to be physically tough too, I imagine, if you're driving your your sheep all over the countryside. You know, when it's raining or snowing or if it's, you know, what kind of terrain it is. If it's rocky and hilly and, you know, and sometimes if the sheep have to run off somewhere, you've got to run after them. And you have the shepherd's crook, you know, you can kind of help guide them, or if one falls into a crevice or crevasse, you can use it to pull them up, you know, and uh, shepherds have to be on the fly thinking of stuff, I imagine, always, always on on edge to, to make sure there's no dangers that can take the sheep, because there are animals that will, will sneak a little lamb, unbeknownst to the shepherd, I'm sure, uh, and uh, there are greater things too, lions possibly, and and other predators. So the shepherd really has to be on their guard all the time. And that's tiring, isn't it? When you're always on their guard. You know, even when you have the sheep pen and at night you bring all the sheep and you're sleeping at the, the entrance, you, know, you wonder how much sleep you're actually going to get. Uh, so these shepherds are really something. And the other thing about shepherds too is they're down in the dirt. You know, they're getting dirty. They're walking through mud. They're walking through dirt. They're walking through water. All the earthly elements, they're part of the earth. You know, they, they, uh, they appreciate uh, being part of this life around them, too. I mean, they have to be careful the sheep don't overgraze, so they've got to send them along so they don't kill all the grass that they're going to eat. Maybe that's why Jesus keeps referring to shepherds. Well, King David was a shepherd, too. You know, his beginnings were humble. And from there, you can do great things. At the same time, remember your roots, your beginnings, your, your previous life, the, the humble humility that you once had, which is a good gauge so we don't get arrogant and full of ourselves. So maybe shepherd is a good identifier. He doesn't identify with the rich or the elite because not many people can identify with rich and elite. Well, I, I can't identify as much. But shepherds, yeah, you know, we, we can tend to identify with them more. And like I mentioned to Ethan, you know, the sheep are not real, real smart. They need a lot of guidance. And as I get older, I find that I'm not all that smart either. I need a lot of guidance, a lot of prayer, uh, a lot of people around me to help me make decisions or, or listen to my crazy ideas or whatever have you. So Jesus is, is, is reassuring his, his, his disciples that although they're sheep, that they're well cared for and that they will be well cared for and that there are others out there who are sheep that maybe not know they're sheep so much, but there are others out there who, who do need the, the presence and love and guidance of, of God in their lives. And Jesus also mentions that He's the good shepherd, whatever that means. I imagine one who is on top of things, who is self-sacrificing and willing to, to do what it takes to make sure the sheep benefit. We've mentioned before that we have people who, who are leaders, managers, who are great shepherds. I come, it comes to mind to me to think about like the Nelson Mandela's that, that create a nation and unify a nation or, or others. The Mother Teresa, who was a, probably a, a great shepherd in her right in the streets of India and beyond and, and others, we can probably know in our hearts, can, can name them as shepherds. And, and the thing is, <clears throat> if you were to ask them what it's like to be a shepherd, they would tell you that they are not. They'll, they would tell you that they are the hired hands. Only God can be shepherd. God is the one who, I don't want to say owns us, but has created us. 
and, and we are gods. The hired hand, you know, oftentimes will run off when times get tough. Sometimes we'll stick, a, stick it out, but sometimes we won't. God will never leave us. And good leaders are close to that, that will never leave their flock. God lays down his life. Jesus lays down his life of his own accord. Just the way Jesus has always done things, of his own accord. We find that not only the the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension are important, but also the humanity is important, too. God pouring God's self into this human form so that we can relate in a meaningful way. Like a shepherd, earthy, hummus. That kind of thing. The shepherd will lead the flock to greener pastures, to safety, to join other sheep who may be lost. God guides us on our way, gives us direction. We read scripture and we find hope in there through the words of people who've lived their lives and who pass it on to us, their wisdom and their knowledge. We find the Spirit of the Lord active through the Scriptures. We find the Spirit of the Lord through the actions of others. We find the Spirit of the Lord within ourselves if we really are at peace with ourselves and listen to the inner and still voice that speaks to us. One flock. One shepherd. The goal is to unify, to bring people together. We're all different. We share different values in some ways. We share different religions or different types of speech. We we share different common common. Uh, we share different ways of seeing the world. And yet we're all God's creation. The task of God is to bring us together to be one so that we can be unified and stronger in our differences too. To take his life up again is powerful. We can't do that. We have no idea how he did it. And yet... We hear the words over and over again and we wonder, how does this happen? And more importantly, why does this happen? It's not for God's benefit so much as for us. It's always been for us. Jesus becoming incarnate in in flesh and Jesus laying down his life and resurrecting and ascending and, and all that for us. So that we might live with meaning and life and love. And be part of this creation in a meaningful way. Shepherds may be low of status, but they're part of this world. An important part. God is the shepherd we celebrate today. Because God is all in all. Amen.